journey, healing my skin, trying lots of things, throwing things at the wall, seeing what sticks over the last mm, probably year or so, and found some really immense success. I'm actually on the other end of a chemical peel right now, my third one of the year, my final one before my wedding. So if you see any little peelies, <laughs> that's why. But I wanted to get a lot of this stuff answered because I've been getting so many questions lately about whether I use things that I've reviewed in the past, what's working for me, what's not, like what my daily routine is, what I have done to my face, what I have not done to my face. And so I wanted to consolidate all of those for you guys. I asked you on my uh, YouTube community tab and also on my Instagram stories. And I have a ton of questions here. So guys, let's jump in. Okay, let's go to YouTube first. Lauren at The Honest Beauty Review, hey girl, she asks, what are your feelings on physical exfoliators? There's so much info out there claiming they can be damaging to your skin, but for me, there's nothing better than a smooth, fresh feeling that they give your skin. If you use them, what are your faves? So this is actually really interesting because when I first got my chemical peel and started using Curology, which we will probably end up talking about later in the video, both of the professionals who were advising me about those things, both my esthetician as well as the medical professional who prescribed me the Curology formulation, they both told me at least for the short term to stop using any kind of physical exfoliator. That being a scrub or a spinning brush or anything that might cause extra irritation to the skin because I use a lot of acids and I use a lot of I don't know, acne treating kind of things on my face. And so, especially living in Texas, where the sun is blaring down on me all the time, pretty much year round, it's just not super advisable to combine the acids that I use on my face for my acne and for anti-aging and a physical exfoliant and then get out in the sun. It's going to cause more irritation. So I, in the short term, heeded their advice, stopped using those things, and then they never really found a way back into my routine after that because I never ended up noticing again that I was having tons of buildup or slow cell turnover. Everything started staying really glowy as a result of the chemical peels and the aftercare that I was using, which I will get into probably in later questions. But the short answer is no, I don't really use them and not because I have anything against them, just because I was advised to stop using them temporarily and then I never really needed them again. And so I just have stopped using them. Cicely K asks, in one of your most recent videos, you mentioned your chemical peels. I would like to know more about those, where you get them done and what improvements you've seen from them. And please let me know if you address this in another video and I just missed it. The whole point of asking you guys this is the fact that there are videos about all of these things, but I don't expect you to go hunt them down. <laughs> There's a video called How I Healed My Acne in 30 Days, and it exhausts some of these things, but I really just wanted to make one big video where you guys could come and get all of your answers. So, chemical peels. I just got my third, like I said, and they do recommend for the peel that I get, which is called a VI peel, and I will link that video of my first peel experience down below. They recommend doing that seasonally, once every three months. And I have noticed the largest shift in my skin from beginning to end, before and after, from chemical peels. I get, like I said, the VI peel. I've never had other peels, but I know that there are some that are really aggressive. And I know there are some that are like plant-based and they vary in aggressiveness, kind of ends of the spectrum. This is a beginner peel for, you know, my age group, I guess, and the things that I wanted. Mainly I was dealing with sun damage, but not like super aggressive sun damage and melasma, which is a combination of like hormones and sun exposure that causes darkening on the skin in sort of like patches. And mine, <laughs> there's no good place for melasma, but mine was on my mustache. It was just really unflattering. And I was really frustrated with having to wear so much makeup every day. And so I went to my dermatologist who has an in-house esthetician and I asked her 
her advice. And I really think that anybody should do that. I think that if you have any kind of issue, don't take my advice 100% unless the advice is just go talk to a professional. I talked to my dermatologist who I trust so much. She prescribes me my medication for my psoriasis. We have had a relationship for a long time and I really trust her advice. And so she referred me to their in-house esthetician who is, uh, her name is Jessica and she is delightful. And she has given me all of my peels and she's advised me about a couple of other things that I may or may not end up doing in the future. But the biggest thing with chemical peels is that the one that I got at least, it start, the first one that you get is the most effective. It's incredible because everything on your face just kind of lifts and then, and then peels off over the course of a couple of days. There's aftercare that you do with it and they give you this little take home package of the aftercare, like these little towelettes that you scrub your face with, and then there's a face wash that you use for the next week. Oh, and uh, a really, really heavy SPF and an anti-itch cream, which if you've ever had a peel, you understand why you would need an anti-itch cream because, oh my God, <laughs> the first night your face itches so much. So anyway, the biggest thing that I noticed was that it doesn't just peel your skin once, it goes to work on things that need extra peeling too. So my cheeks and things that don't break out as much or don't have as much angry things underneath the surface, they didn't peel as aggressively, whereas around my mouth, my kind of hormone area, and where I've had really like thick skin, deep acne, it just peeled and peeled and peeled and peeled for the first time. So I felt like what it did was give me a restart on my acne, it, it was able to wipe the slate clean to some degree so that I could start over with new skincare because so much of the skincare that I'd been using before that with AHAs, BHAs, retinols, things like that, I didn't know whether I was breaking out from them because they were bad for my skin or because there was just so many years of garbage underneath the surface that was getting churned out by those acids. And so I wanted to wipe the slate clean and then I got on a new regimen for my skin and it has been the most effective thing. If you are dealing with sun damage, if you are dealing with acne, if you are dealing with just that feeling where you feel like it's just chaos underneath the surface and it's unpredictable and you just don't know what to do, look into a VI peel, talk to your dermatologist, talk to your esthetician, see about getting a chemical peel because they can be so amazing. I know they're not for everybody, that's why I recommend going to a doctor to talk about it, but I think that it has been the biggest game changer for my face of anything that I have done and I will continue going to my dermatologist and my esthetician to talk about future issues with my skin because there's just so much stuff that they can do. You're not the only person who's ever had this problem and there are amazing solutions out there for this kind of thing. I had really aggressive adult acne and I feel like it really turned my life around. So another person, uh, uh, Brie Pont says, melasma journey lulls. So that I kind of addressed in the previous question. It is essentially a thing I battle every single day. The things that I do in between are used, well, let's, I'll show you. So in between my chemical peels and only at night, I use this, it is, wow, really old, but this is the Paula's Choice Resist Triple Action Dark Spot Eraser 7% AHA Lotion with Glycolic Acid and Hydroquinone. <laughs> Paula's Choice is a plan around. Her products are really, really effective and can also be really, really aggressive. Don't put this on your whole face. I did that, it broke me out, but after I cleared everything out with the chemical peels, this proved to be a really great maintenance product for that upper lip area. I just apply it at night. Don't apply those kinds of acids during the day because they make you so much more vulnerable to sun damage. And so melasma is caused by sun damage. Put sunscreen on during the day. <laughs> Don't put on an acid during the day because it's not going to help. It's actually going to make it worse. Jennifer Hively asks, can I be exhibit B, of course you are A, for your curology and Sunday Riley routine? Because girl, let me tell you, life changed, hashtag drops mic, lol. So I'm guessing from this, Jennifer adopted my routine of curology and Sunday Riley and she's seeing results too. So that's Utterly fantastic. Curology is personalized, and so it's gonna be different for everybody for your needs, which I think is actually really wonderful. I think one size fits all acne treatment products are just kind of 
you know, the likelihood that they're gonna work for you is, is pretty slim because it's one formulation. So her using Curology is different from me using Curology, but I think that's kind of the beauty of it. And we will get into some Sunday Riley in a minute, but yes, girl. Yes, Sunday Riley. All right, so Living My Life 22 asks, what's your routine for day and night? Do you use sunscreen on a daily basis or only when you step out? Do you use toner, face masks? Maybe also explain your skin type and issues. And I know when we talk skincare, we mostly think the face, but as someone who runs, do you use a sunscreen for your body outside? Different types of body moisturizers, random questions, but hope this helps. All right, let's take this one at a time. My routine for day and night. In the morning, I wash my face with the Glossier Milky Jelly Cleanser. I find that this is the best cleanser for maintaining your moisture barrier on your face. A lot of cleansers you're probably not going to want to use twice a day because you still want your face to be able to kind of rebuild the moisture barrier. This doesn't disturb my moisture barrier, which I think is really nice. Like when I rinse it off, I never feel that kind of squeaky clean feeling. It's just a really nice gentle cleanser that rinses off really clean and it doesn't suds up. It doesn't have any really aggressive kind of surfactants in it. So I use that morning and night and in the morning, the first thing that I put on is my Curology. I know I know it's not recommended to be used that often, and honestly, this probably does make my skin a little bit more vulnerable to the sun, but I also find that it keeps my acne at bay, and honestly, guys, that's my highest priority. So I don't use a ton of other kind of things that make me vulnerable to the sun on my face during the day, but I do use Curology. I use it kind of in a really small amount during the day though, because it's gonna be under makeup and everything. And so I just kind of pat it almost like a primer because it has kind of a dimethicone consistency to it. And so I kind of pat it into the areas where I tend to break out and then that's it. Then I use the Tidal Brightening Enzyme Water Cream by Sunday Riley. This is a moisturizer that delivers an intense water with two forms of hyaluronic acid. So this is another one of the acids that I use, but hyaluronic acid is able to hold, I think like something like a thousand times its size in water or something like that per particle. So it's ultimately pulling moisture out of the air into your skin. And so I don't think of it as necessarily being a, a harsh acid that's like exfoliating my skin, if that makes sense. This is what she looks like on the inside and it smells like a green juice. It really smells just like juiced greens. It's awesome. And I put that all over. It is super delightful and light and refreshing on the face. In the winter time, I will use something a little bit heavier like the Dr. Jart Ceramided or something like that because my skin gets real dry, girl. And then at night, I do those things as well. I start with the Milky Jelly Cleanser and then I go in with Curology all over my face. Then I go in with, where is she? It's almost empty. I have another one downstairs, but this is the Sunday Riley Good Jeans. This is probably her most famous skincare product and it is the all-in-one lactic acid treatment, deeply exfoliates the dull surface of the skin for clarity, radiance, and younger looking skin. This stuff is bomb. It is bomb. It does such a good job of brightening and anti-aging. And I always wake up with my skin just looking a lot more refreshed. Then I go in with the CEO Rapid Flash Brightening Serum from Sunday Riley. Oh my God, you guys. 15% tetrahexyldesyl ascorbate. That's why I don't use that during the day is because this is a vitamin C serum and it is going to make your skin a lot more susceptible to the sun. So wear this at night, but it does, oh my God, make your skin glow. I love putting it kind of like under my eyes and around my chin and on my, I don't know. It's just, amazing. It's a brightening serum, so it does help kind of lift a little bit of the pigment out, which is nice. It's a gentle, all of these are gentle chemical exfoliants that I use every single night, which makes it so that I don't have to use a physical exfoliant, basically. Then that's when I go in with my water cream, my Tidal, again, like at night. And lately, I've been trying this. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet because I've only been using it for like a week, but this is the Sunday Rally UFO Ultra Clarifying Acne Treatment Facial Oil. I like the idea of an oil that treats acne. It's got salicylic acid in it, uh, but it's also got a bunch of other really cool stuff in it. Yeah, it's got like licorice root extract and a bunch of other stuff that's basically supposed to help prevent acne, not just kind of like burn it to the ground. So I got this off of Super Great as a prize for my super coins. And I think I like it, but I, I, it's inconclusive so far because I just, I don't know. I haven't used it for long enough. And then I don't have it with me because it's down in the refrigerator, guys. After I put my makeup on and before I go to bed, I always 
use Mother Dirt. You guys have been asking whether I still use Mother Dirt. Mother Dirt is a bacteria spray that helps replenish a bacteria, a, a peacekeeper bacteria on our skin that we don't really naturally make enough of anymore. And it helps your bacteria on your face during the day and overnight not collude against you, I guess. It helps them all kind of hold hands and kumbaya and not break you out, which is cool. You can also use it under your arms and in your private parts and stuff and it keeps you from smelling bad. It's pretty awesome. So my skin type is dry and it's super dry in the winter, which also means that when I break out, it's this weird combination of my, the outside of my skin kind of attacking and being horribly like dried up and terrible, but the acne being like really wet and gross and I hate it. So one of the biggest things that is not really addressed in any of these questions that I had to overcome was picking. I had to stop picking. You guys, now if I need to do an extraction, I use an extraction tool, I clean everything first, and yes, when you do an extraction, things still get irritated and awful looking, but I try to limit it. I try to do like only when it's just sitting right on the top of the skin and it just it looks like I can just take the end of that little the little loop and just, you know, pop it out or whatever. And then I treat the crap out of it. I use a lot of face masks and stuff. I try and keep in mind if you're a picker, I try and keep in mind what it looks like when I pick. Insert photo here. Because it's horrifying and it, it's shameful. It's the only thing that I was ashamed of when it came to my acne. It was not that I had acne, it was that I couldn't stop picking it and I made it look so bad. I was so guilty about doing that to my face. I feel like that's another thing that the chemical peels really helped with was that it gave me amnesty on that. And for that, I mean, you guys, Three chemical peels is $850 at the esthetician that I go to. Knowing that, bearing that cost in mind, that did a really good job of keeping me from picking because I was like, I did a lot of work on my face. I paid a lot of money to get this kind of restarted. So I might as well go ahead and, and exercise some self-discipline. Oh, and as far as sunscreen is concerned, yes, I use a sunscreen on my body. I will use either a sport sunscreen or I have the Shiseido really intense one that turns your face like blue white. <laughs> that thing is really effective, but it looks terrifying, but I will still wear that a lot because I just don't, like if I'm out on a run, I don't care what I look like. During the day, I use this underneath everything and you should always wear sunscreen, you guys. Even from driving in your car or being at a computer screen or anything like that, all of those things can age your skin. And so I absolutely recommend using a sunscreen I've been on this spiel before, but if you have sunscreen in your makeup, that's not enough. I mean, the it Cosmetics being 50 plus, that's probably pretty good, but anything that's like, you know, 15, whatever, you're only getting about half of that and it wears off with any kind of sun exposure. So I always like to put one on before that. So this is the Glossier Invisible Shield Daily Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 35. I have 20% off of this down below and this is an amazing, really lightweight, gorgeous sunscreen that gives you that nice Glossier glow. It's not very expensive and it totally, well, it does smell like sunscreen. It's actually a really nice smell. It goes away pretty quickly and it totally behaves under makeup. So I think that it's a beautiful sunscreen. It's not a sports sunscreen. Like don't wear it to go running because it's not, it's going to sweat off. It's not sweat proof, but I think that that's really nice because it's very non comedogenic and it's super, super gentle, just like all of Glossier's products. So that's the one that I use every day and I would highly recommend it. What do you use AM PM weekly and are you still using peels? I already answered that. Oh, masks. So the masks that I use right now are these two. This is the Beauty Counter Balancing Charcoal Facial Mask. I like this. I actually though prefer this guy. I'm still gonna work my way through it, but this is the Bosha Charcoal Pore Pudding. This thing is legit. I like this so much. It's a little bit gentler. That one's kind of aggressive. I can feel it kind of like sucking my face dry. And this one is so unbelievably like nourishing at the same time that it's sort of pulling everything out of your skin, which is nice. A charcoal mask, I've always said this, will arrest a breakout. It will stop a breakout in its tracks and I really appreciate that about it. So I will probably be replenishing this one. I really, really like it. And then this is, you guys, someone left a comment on the video that I reviewed this on my channel recently where they're like, so overhyped. This is not an overhyped mask. First of all, you get a crap ton of it for the price and this is probably one of the most universally beautiful nourishing masks I have ever used. This is the Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask and it is called the Jet Lag Mask because it replenishes your skin after 
crap that happens that dehydrates your skin like jet lag or lack of sleep or a hangover or a chemical peel. So I get done with my chemical peel and yes, everything has peeled off and is delightful, but it hits a point where it stops being dry and peely and just starts being dry. And I will sleep in this. You can leave it on, which is so nice. Oh, okay. Bye. This is so nourishing. It makes your skin glow. And when I wear it overnight, I wake up and my face is just kind of like lifted and healthy looking, quenched. It's, it's awesome. And it's really good, I think, for people who have oily skin. I have very dry skin. And so I will use kind of serums and stuff with this. I don't find this to be kind of like over emollient. It doesn't like over condition my skin. So I think that if you have oily skin and you're looking for a nice nourishing face mask, this is an amazing balancing face mask. I highly, highly recommend it. Okay, so Trina Turner asks, I have melasma, acne, dark circles, and under eye wrinkles that everything seems to sit on. What are the best products, facial wash, sunscreen, and makeup routines for people like me? I'm 46. I'm also pretty frugal, so affordable products that work would be great. So I understand being frugal, and I also understand wanting to cover that stuff up, but I don't want to recommend a makeup to cover that kind of thing up. I think that every woman has the right to feel comfortable in her skin. And so for that, I would definitely say go to your dermatologist, talk to them about getting a peel. I really cannot emphasize enough how many problems it knocks out. Think of all of the products that you're buying over the counter to try and lighten things or try and clear things or try and de-wrinkle things or try and cover things. Add that all up and understand you could go in, get a chemical peel, get a package of chemical peels and it will solve all of it and you won't have to put anything else on your face, okay? There is something to be said for investing in your skin and it is, I mean, I already put the before and after up, but guys, I mean, night and day, night and day. It probably took five years off of my face. So if you're dealing with darkness and sallowness and discoloration and melasma and acne and things just building up and feeling like they're working against you, talk to your dermatologist. They really have some amazing stuff out there. And if you don't like your dermatologist, get a new dermatologist. There's a lot of dermatologists out there. I have had to go through a lot of doctors to get to the doctors that I know and love. Like there are really just people who don't care enough about what you care about. And you have to find someone who relates to you. And I found it happened to be, you know, this woman, Dr. Richardson and her esthetician, Jessica, and they are fantastic. And I feel like I can trust them. So find somebody that you feel like you can trust don't feel like you have to spend money on covering things up all the time. Don't get kind of trapped in this cycle. Buying products that have all of these promises. A product that you place on your face is only going to maintain what you've got going on. It's only going to slow down certain processes. Things that your esthetician and your dermatologist can do are the things that are going to reverse things. So yeah, for all of those issues, that is what I would recommend. I'm sorry if that's not the answer that you wanted, but I cannot say enough about it. Okay, so those are all the questions from YouTube. Let's go on to Instagram and see what you guys asked me here. So I'm really thinking about Sunday Riley, but it's so expensive. What are the essentials needed? Okay, I started out with the Bright Young Thing sample pack, and those are the products that I ended up sticking with. But I would say that if you're going to start with a Sunday Riley product that is going to kick ass out of the gate, a CEO Rapid Flash. It is ridiculous. You're going to notice a difference right away. If you want to spring for two, I would go for these two. This is the CEO and the Good Jeans. Everybody loves Good Jeans for a reason. It is for every skin type. It is awesome stuff. You only have to use these two things at night. You're not going to go through them very quickly. They are phenomenal, phenomenal products, but she has an entire range out there, guys. Do some research about it. I'm not an expert on Sunday Rally in particular. Like I don't know every single product, but Think about the needs of your skin, and honestly, they make these things pretty easy to kind of research online. I'm not trying to kind of pass the buck on researching it, but I have only used the ones that I've used. The only thing that I don't like from Sunday Riley is her foundation. I do not understand it. It didn't make any sense to me. I did not like it. But I would definitely recommend starting with the CEO Rapid Flash Brightening Serum. This is just an absolutely unreal product. And always keep in mind, guys, if you buy something and you don't like it, you can return it, even if it's empty. The packaging costs more than the product, okay? Don't feel ashamed about returning something if it didn't work for you. If it didn't work for you, it's not your fault. <laughs> return it. Oh, and that question was from Totally Taryn. Hi. Charisma Jane asks, do you still use PMD or AHAs and BHAs? So, 
The PMD is the personal microderm device that I tested on my channel. It's very effective, not particularly user friendly, and no, I do not use it anymore because of what I talked about in the first question where I have just not had a necessity for any kind of physical exfoliation. I did find that it worked well, but honestly, the biggest lesson that I have gained from all of this skincare discovery in my life lately is that the less change, the better. The less drastic change, the better that I'm doing to my skin on a daily basis. If I can keep from altering or disrupting or pissing my face off, it can probably figure out how to handle stuff on its own most of the time. Things that piss my skin off, excoriation, basically anything scrubbing on my face, anything lifting off the cells that aren't ready to get lifted off, or picking. So those are the things that I consider to be kind of swinging too wide in terms of what my skin should be expected to recover from on a daily basis. The things that I think it should be expected to recover from are gentle AHAs, BHAs, even the Glossier solution that's kind of a toner with AHA, BHA, PHA, I want to say, is a little too aggressive for my skin. I just try and be as gentle as possible and kind of let things work in their own time. I find that excoriation, exfoliation, popping things, it's just kind of trying to take a sledgehammer to something that needs a very gentle touch. So no, I do not use the PMD anymore. I think that it works for what it says that it's going to do, but it's just not for me. Do you still use that electrical current thing for wrinkles? I wanna talk about this with you guys because I was going to do a full dedicated video based on the premise that I was going to be using this like twice a day for three months like they said to do or something and see results from it. So this is the New Face Mini. I bought this because I was like, I don't wanna get Botox and I wanna get this lifted complexion and this is gonna basically make me look like Jennifer Aniston for the rest of my life. Here's the tea on this little guy. It works. It does work. I cannot work this into my routine on a daily basis. I probably use it three times a week. The thing that it does is instantly lift your face. Instantly, guys. I mean, you use this in the morning if you have had a couple of drinks or some salty food the night before, you just don't like what you woke up to. This little guy is incredible for just instant results. Like it actually lifts your face in real time. It's very cool. Very, very, very cool. Long term, using it twice a day or whatever like they recommend, because I can't, I just don't have the discipline to work this into my routine for that many times a day, especially because, oh, I don't have it here. Oh, yes, I do. This stuff is freaky. This is the leave-on gel primer, hydrating, whatever. This is what you have to slather your face in to get this thing to work. And yes, I totally understand. It's like getting an ultrasound or something like that. I mean, it needs that lubricant to be able to work. But you can't get it off your face afterwards. That's why they call it a leave-on. Like, I can't rinse it off. It's, it freaks me out. And there's just not very much in here, and so you end up using so much of it that I just haven't really, like, thought to repurchase that yet. I probably will, because like I said, this is fantastic every time you use it. Long-term, I'm sure it continues to work the muscles on your face and you see long-term results. It's just a matter of whether you have the self-discipline to use it every single day, which I don't. If I use it three times a week, I still see results and I see results in real time. So yes, the stinking thing does work, but is it going to replace my need or desire for extra measures that I might end up having to take? No. Rab Redford asks, are you still microneedling? What products do you use before and after, if so? I have not been microneedling at home anymore and it's because my esthetician told me that those microneedling devices that you buy for at home are questionable. <laughs> She's like, if you look at them under a microscope, those little needles are not uniform in shape. They can have a lot of little snags on them and stuff. And so she has the actual pen in her office where she can vary the size and the length for different parts of my face and stuff. I haven't done it yet, but that's what I'm gonna start doing. I have done all of these chemical peels over the summer. Because my face dries out so much, I think I will kind of reserve the facial peels, kind of like space them out a little bit more during the winter. That'll give me time to start doing a microneedle facial regimen. I'm going to buy a package of them and essentially what that does is it makes these teeny tiny little like 
pinpricks in your skin that tell your body to create more collagen and strengthen everything and kind of help smooth out wrinkles and helps kind of lift everything over time. That's my speed right now. Guys, I cannot get out of my head about Botox. I know that it's common and I know that a lot of people have really strong feelings about it one way and the other. I also look at other YouTubers all day and I also edit my own face all day and I see how smooth their faces are and how perfectly smooth their foreheads and eyebrows are and it's tempting, I'll be honest. And I've told you guys this before, I have made two different appointments to get Botox on my 11s and I chickened out twice. I've chickened out both times because I just can't bring myself to do it. There's just something about it that really freaks me out. It's like you know that you're going to be doing it for the rest of your life and you know that you're killing your muscles. I don't know guys. I'm not going to be high and mighty about this and say I'm never, never, never going to do Botox because I'm 31 and aging is already kind of freaking me out. Not in a bad way, like I'm proud of my face, I'm proud of the woman that I am and the woman that I will, you know, become, but I also don't want to look like I'm scowling permanently. So, you know, if there's some kind of like intermediary option, I'm going to explore that, but I'm also not going to say that I will never ever ever do Botox because I just don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so you guys tell me, be like, Kaki, oh my god, like I know that everybody's got opinions, but I'm open to all of them. I haven't done anything like that yet, but you know, it, it's it's a possibility in the future. I don't know. I trust my esthetician, I trust my doctor, so that's all I'm going to say about that, but the next thing that I'm going to try is actually professional microneedling. Peach Leaf asks, my face is like this, meaning the photo that I posted, I'll put it right here, of just me after I've picked and it was just a nightmare scenario. She says, and I think it's about diet for me, do you have any tips on what's good for healthy skin? Sorry, I couldn't see the whole thing at once. So yes, I do think your skin is always going to tell you what's wrong. It's a really good barometer and some of us have kind of stronger red flags than others about how our skin chooses to tell us what's going on. I believe, at least for myself and the people that I like talk to about this, in eating for your blood type. I am uh, a, a blood type O, so a vegan diet doesn't work for me. Actually, meat, dairy, those kinds of things work really, really well for my body. It's like the one thing that doesn't confuse my stomach. Vegan diet does not work for me at all. Um, but do some research into that kind of stuff. I definitely think that, again, this is a matter to talk to your esthetician and your dermatologist about because they probably have answers that I don't have. But from a food and nutrition standpoint, it's really tough to know. You kind of just have to feel it out. And I think that if you are having food issues, it's going to show on your skin, but it's also going to show other places. So as soon as you make your stomach feel better, and as soon as you make your body feel better food wise, your skin's probably going to do better too. So I think that those are all of the questions that you guys had for me on this. If you have any more questions, leave them below on this video. This is going to be an insanely long video. I knew that going in just because there are so many questions about this. But I hope that this was helpful for you guys. Big takeaways here, talk to your doctor. I am not a doctor, but also take heart in the fact that there are professionals out there who know what they're doing and who actually care about helping you heal your skin because there is really no better feeling to me after having acne for 20 years than finally getting ahead of it. It feels so good to wake up to pretty skin. So. That is where I will leave you guys today. If you enjoyed this, do give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, guys, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would truly love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching today and for asking all these questions. I love you guys so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.